Our topic today are the contributions of the good doctor Junichi Tauchi to experiment design and analysis. Now, Dr. Taguchi has written a couple of books, his two volume System of Experimental Design, and a couple other things that we can get, and I do believe from Aging Productivity Organization, Introduction to Quality Engineering, and from the American Spire Institute, Orthogonal Arrays, and Linear Graphs. So, this is where some of this information comes from. But anyway, we're going to talk about some of those key contributions. We're not going to cover all of them. One of them is the signal-to-noise metric itself. We're going to talk about those. We're going to talk about noise factors and then the loss function and how all this ties together. Now, one thing that we're not going to cover, and we'll have to save this for another time, is accumulation analysis, which is a way to handle um, discrete information where we're actually visually evaluating um, the output of a process. So we'll save that for another time. So let's get started with the signal-to-noise metric. Alright, signal-to-noise metrics help us to do a few things. Often when we're conducting and running an experiment, we're trying to improve some characteristic. So sometimes we're trying to maximize that characteristic, sometimes we're trying to minimize that characteristic. So if I'm looking at a distribution and I want to maximize it, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take this average value and this whole distribution and I'm trying to push it to a higher level. But I'd also like to reduce the variation about that average value. Now, if I want to minimize it, I want to take this distribution and I want to shift it to another location, which would have a lower average value, but I always want to try to reduce the variation about that average. So the way to do that, the first and easiest signal-to-noise metric that I can use would just be to use the average of each of the data points that we have for an experiment run. Now, to use these, we have to have multiple repetitions per run so we can calculate an average value, so we can calculate a standard deviation. So this other standard deviation, signal-to-noise metric, is this SN nominal. And what this allows us to do is to find the variables that are going to shrink the variation about the average value. So a standard analysis of variance is going to be looking at the means. It's going to be looking at how do we adjust the location of that distribution? Now, a performance metric that was originally put together by Sir Ronald Fisher, the father of modern day statistics back in the 20s, was to look at the log of the standard deviation. Now, Dr. Taguchi has put together a series of signal-to-noise metrics that we can use, and he has a common way to evaluate them. So his formula for this nominal is best, which is looking at variables that are going to reduce the variation. They may also have an influence on shifting the average value, but the key thing is here, we can find the factors that are going to reduce the variability. So this formula is minus 10 times the log of the standard deviation squared. So you're going to need multiple data points per experiment run to be able to calculate that metric because we calculate that for each experimental condition and then we use that calculated value to do our analysis of variance. Alright, now some other signal to noise metrics that we have. Um, we have the maximize metric, we have the minimize metric, which also not only does it shift the average value, but it's also going to help to reduce the variation about that average. So it's kind of a two-in-one uh, hitter that you get here. So for the maximizing metric, what we do is minus 10 times the log of the sum of 1 over y squared divided by the total number of data points per experimental run. So this metric, once again, is for each experimental condition, and n here is how many data points do you have in an experimental run. Now we have a minimizing characteristic here, and in this one we do minus 10 times the log of the sum of y squared divided by the number of data points that were in that experimental run. And the interpretation of this is bigger is better. Bigger is better. So if I look at a scale that goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, 
as I go up this scale in a positive direction, bigger is better. So if I've got minus 500 versus minus 100 versus minus 2 versus 1, 10, 50, all right, I'm going in a positive direction. So bigger is better in a positive direction, can minus infinity to plus infinity, and that tells us the very best condition. All right, now another of these metrics, and this is a very powerful one, is hitting a target. So sometimes we're not faced with a case where, oh, we want to maximize or, oh, we want to minimize. Maybe we're faced with a, with a situation where we really need to hit a specific target and we got to hit it every single time with low variability about that target. So to achieve that, what we have to do and what we're trying to do is we're trying to take this distribution and this average value, we're trying to shift it to the point where it's right on target and then reduce the variation about that target. So the calculation for this one, it's a little bit more difficult, but it's 20 times the log of this thing here where we have the sum of the difference between the average, the individual data point per run minus t, that quantity squared, sum all those up, divide that by n minus 1 where n is the total number of data points per experiment run. We're going to take the square root of that thing and then it becomes the denominator and the numerator is the target value. So the target value is now divided by this and it's 20 times the log of this calculation. It still turns out to be bigger is better. But what this is focusing on is how do we reduce that variation about the target value? How do we find those factors that are going to get us to hit the target every single time and reduce the variation about it? So this is a very powerful um, signal to noise performance metric and it's one that um, I've actually had the opportunity to use in many situations. But we're often faced with just the simple, let's just get, we'll maximize it, we'll minimize it, but sometimes we have to hit a target, and this is how you go about doing it. All right, another one of his contributions, the good Dr. Jinichi Taguchi, is noise factors. All right, so what is a noise factor? Well, a noise factor is something that can really mess up our process, but we're going to have to deal with it because we can't get rid of it, we can't control it. So it causes variation in the process, and it's going to be there. We can't control it, we can't eliminate it, but if we use design of experiments, we can become robust against this noise factor. All right, so what are some examples of noise factors? All right, an example of a noise factor, things that exist in our process, but we can't control them. They, they're there. They're not going away. Geography, seasonality shifts, time of day, things like materials, equipment, processes. How often do our purchasing folks come up with a cost savings because they're going to change the vendor for a particular material component that we're going to use? What if that makes a difference in the process? What if that causes some excessive variability? Are there things that we can adjust and control in our process to minimize the influence of the variability that was just created because we saved some money. How about equipment? What if we need multiple processes that have multiple similar pieces of equipment that are supposed to produce the same thing? How do we make it so that every one of those processes with the variation in the supposedly the same equipment can give us the same output consistently every single time? So what we want to do is with our design experiment, we want to find the ways to adjust and control the things that we can control that minimize the influence of the fact that there could be some variation creeping into our process based on these noise factors. And I know this looks a little complicated, but so this is how we actually do this. Let's say that we have our design of experiments that we're going to conduct. And this is a three-factor, full factorial, eight experimental conditions, all right, two level settings, a low and a high for factors A, B, and C. 
And we're going to run this experiment, but we're faced with a situation where we've got two different noise factors. One of these noise factors, let's say it's a change of material, and let's say the other one is the time of the day. So we create another little design of experiments matrix up here. This is called our noise array. This is the inner array, the outer array, if we use the language of the good doctor, Junichi Kuguchi. And we have two factors of two level settings. There's four experimental combinations. All right, now we know that this is going to cause variation. And we're cognizant of that. But that's not what we're trying to study. We want to find, do we have factors at what level settings are going to make it so that I don't care if I have all this variability in here. So what we do is we set up a situation where we're at the low setting for each of the two noise factors. And then we run our whole experiment and collect our data. Then we set it up for the second condition in our outer array for our noise factors, and we run the whole experiment again. Same thing for run number three and then run number four. So now we each actually have a, you know, we have a set of data for each one of these conditions of our noise factors, and we've done that for the whole array of the noise factors. Now, yes, this does take some extra time because we're going to be conducting this whole experiment four times. All right? But it's very powerful because if we can limit, eliminate the variation that is caused by these things that we cannot control, by what we can control, it's very, very powerful. So then we take those signal-to-noise performance metrics and we would take a look at the mean, all right? for all of these data points, and we'll be able to do that analysis. And then we'd also take a look at our nominal is best minus 10 times log of the standard deviation. We calculate for that for each one of these experimental runs. And then we go ahead and conduct our analysis of variance, and we'd identify the factors that are significant, come up with the best level settings, so that we can minimize the influence that the noise factors had in our process. All right, so this is how we can go ahead and become robust versus noise using design of experiments and the noise factors. All right, the last topic that we're going to talk about is one that's called the lost function. And this is a concept that Dr. Taguchi came up with, and I think it's very powerful and it's a good way to think about things. We've traditionally looked at specifications, a lower spec and an upper spec, and we've always said that if we are in this zone in here, everybody's happy. We have good product. There's no problem. There's no waste. Well, what if we're not quite on target in here? Does that cause an issue? I mean, the traditional view of this, if I look at this from a good and no good interpretation of loss, unless I'm on the low side of the lower spec, or I'm above the upper spec, I'm not incurring any losses. As long as I'm in the specification, I'm fine. Well, is that really the case? Is that what you've seen in practice? I've seen where just slight deviations away from target cause problems, and those can be costly. So what Dr. Taguchi was suggesting is that we should really look at this from the standpoint of more of a continuous function all right, and he came up with a, um, a very generalized equation where the loss of y is some constant times y minus the target squared. All right, and that is actually the equation for a parabola. Now, what this is showing is that as I deviate from the target, I begin to incur losses even though I'm well within my specification. So what he's really proposing is that if we have a distribution, say, that looks like this, and it's not really on target, we are starting to incur the losses, okay, even though we're not on target. And what the doctor would like to see us do is to get a distribution that's on target 
with low variability, and then we can see that we minimize our losses. So that's the concept of the loss function, and that'll wrap up our little discussion on the contributions of Dr. Janichi Tauchi to statistical experimentation and its analysis.